Another one up. Cool. Yes, I'm assuming that's what that little sound effect in the middle there was. Okay, so it's... Oh. A, it's six cards memory, and B, the cards are randomized as we go. That is... I don't think I've ever seen that done before. Usually they are set as soon as, you know, you start the stage, but, um, that was weird. <laughs> okay, I do remember just being all just kind of in general, what the ever love in hell? <laughs> Why is that Speedy Gonzalez's attack? Weird. Also, singing mummy. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. The rising lava. I don't care about those things. Let's just get out of here. <laughs> oh, that worked. Oh, and we can jump up things. Cool. Under that, though, so we'll do that. Whoa, now. Yeah, I can see why you said that this level is obnoxious. This is, uh, definitely way higher on the annoying level scale than. Well, the previous ones have been. <laughs> of course, it would really help if I could master basic platforming, wouldn't it? Is that Michigan J Frog wearing sunglasses? Like it would match up with the singing mummy we had earlier, but the it looks like Michigan, it's like some kind of buff bullfrog who happens to be wearing shades. Okay. Oh, 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 okay, I didn't move that on my own, I see. Nifty, I suppose, although you really don't have much in the way of reaction time sort of have to already be moving before. I hope, yeah. <laughs> Trying to anticipate it will probably get you killed. Uh, no, I'm, I'm going down this way, thank you. Oh. up there. What was over here? Ah, cool. Sure, I'll take the uh, super shield over that. Means I get to ignore things and just uh, barrel on through. I am okay with this. Whoa, and a vampire! Who's actually not the Looney Tunes vampire. That the damn shame. That vampire was awesome. Yeah, let's get a bit less of that happening. Okay. <laughs> I want to say that the episode was named something like Transylvania 65000, or I might be thinking of the movie called that. I, 
I know Transylvania was in the name of the episode as the start of it. It was uh, Bugs Bunny and... No. And we get a giant wedge of cheese. Cool. <laughs> but it was, yeah, Bugs Bunny and that vampire, and I think that was the only cartoon that that vampire showed up in. But it also had the two-headed vulture, which is always a nice character. Hmm. Okay. And the apparently broken statue means auto-jump. Interesting. <laughs> yep, uh, Fowl posted a picture of the vampire I had in mind exactly. Ah, cool, it was Transylvania 6 5000. I'm kind of now really curious just what that is a reference to, because I know the movie the titled that came out years and years and years after this. Er, yeah, after this. <laughs> after that cartoon. So I'm really curious just what it is that it's referencing, or what it means. Okay, there's a thing called Pennsylvania 65000. <laughs> okay, we don't get an attack in this, we get that. <laughs> and what's this state actually? Oh, I remember this garbage now. I remember really disliking this when I got to this in the uh, Game Boy version. Although this, um, doesn't seem too terribly bad this time, for some reason. Okay, maybe it is, actually. As we go along, just, um, the number of things he is tossing at us. Oh, what? A cactus? No, it's a watermelon. But <laughs> Interesting. Watermelon cluster bomb. Apparently, Pennsylvania 65000 was the number of the Hotel Pennsylvania in New York City. Back when they had that uh, rather interesting method of, um, well, the interesting phone number system, I guess it would be. Yeah. Doesn't matter now. Maybe let's just speed that up a bit already. <laughs> Definitely do enjoy the fact that every character gets their own bonus stage. Even if some of them aren't really suited to the character, like as his memory game. Totally what I would associate with the character. And I saved it into that, and I have a backup save, but it's just a bonus stage. So I'm not really concerned. And Bugs also just has a frisbee. Apparently frogs take two hits from a frisbee have figured them for multiple hit enemies. Oh no. <laughs> and my 
character thing is flashing. Why, why, why is the Bug Bunny icon flashing? Not entirely certain what that indicates. Jump for it. Now it's no longer flashing, so maybe that just, um... Oops. I shouldn't look at the chat while I try to do things. I just try to barrel through, either. A little bit of an enemy, yeah, enemy overload at the moment here. Seriously. You. Out of the way, out of the way. There. Okay, well, well that's a bit different, but then. Uh, or, why not? Not seeing a way to get past this without taking damage, so screw it. We got that one health to spare, so. <laughs> that was fun. And, um... Skeleton Lizard, I guess. Or, no, that's not a lizard face. Oh, skull. What the hell was that? Also, evidently, boss rush time. So can I be... No, it's just a singing mummy. <laughs> a mummy who sings for no reason at all. So I should really be using the jump attack more. It definitely does more damage than the frisbee. Also, that was kind of awesome. What in the... It's... I... A blue quirk? You know, quirk the tomato? <laughs> What's that supposed to be? Or, it, it, it's the thing that, um... Uh, Hebereke, uh, what the hell did they call him in Euphoria? Uh, I don't remember the name anymore, but uh, the thing that he threw as a weapon come to life and throwing other things around. Bob Louie, there we go, uh, Bob Louie was the name that the gave to Hebereke in the, um, European release of Euphoria. That would be an awesome but obscure, uh, sort of a platforming, almost Metroidvania-esque thing before that was even a thing on the NES. Now, if Elmer is our actual final boss, that'll be very awesome and appropriate. I think we can escape this. We'll escape it and also, well, not, we'll take it and also deal damage to him. And then we'll be more careful. And looking at that now, I possibly could have just ducked in that, but oh well. This is dangerous. Challenging final boss here, assuming that this is, in fact, the final boss. Given the boss rush, though, it seems appropriate. Mm. 
yet again, let's just speed up all this, uh, point adding. So, um, yeah. Evidently we're done already. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this has been Looney Tunes again. All in all, it is still a decent game. Don't really remember the first one well enough to say if there were any major differences between uh, this and the colorless version, but I don't think there were. I think this was completely identical. to have Speedy's attack just be a dance and a star, a star song. Also, whoever is playing these demos for this uh, little end credits sequence, they would not survive long enough to actually beat the game. They are doing terrible. And Foghorn Leghorn and Pepe Le Pew, who were not in the game whatsoever. But, you know, they're just here for the hell of it. Oh, evidently the original Game Boy game did not have the bonus stages. Good to know. tiny bit of, um, square coloring on the spot where, uh, Taz's left hand is, uh, in front of Yosemite Sam's mustache. But other than that, the coloring in this game has been fantastic. Barely any of that square coloring that is so prevalent in the Game Boy Color. Ah, yep, where uh, Bugs Bunny's ear is in front of uh, Elmer's hat as well. Yep. it will be the type where it just stays on the end screen forever. Go ahead and find out. Nope, we can hit start and play the game all over again. Oh, it doesn't keep the score though. That's okay. And yeah, once again, this has been Looney Tunes. All in all, a very good game. Uh, a little bit uh, very difficult in certain spots, but you know, not impossibly so. Just uh, takes a good deal of skill. I would really recommend this one. This one's definitely fun and worth a playthrough. With that, though, we are done here. 